Hey, do you think you are a thinking type in the Jungian system because you are good at math or you enjoy learning about science? Then think again because there is a risk and a chance that you might actually be an F type, mistyping as a T type. And if that is the case and you are constructing your entire lifestyle around that, it could have a negative impact on your personal fulfillment and level of happiness. So please keep on watching if you want to know more about this issue and how to counteract it. Hey, welcome back to Type Evolution. I'm Olympia, and like I said, this video is about the problem of F types mistyping as T types or just the entire misunderstandings around the T type and creating a lifestyle or a career based on that. Before we go more into the issues, what are the stereotypes and what is not basically not an actual thinking type T type in the Jungian system? You should probably watch my video about what the 16 personalities test actually means because in that one I go through each of the letters and what are the common stereotypes associated with that letter. So the ones that I mentioned for T were being avoidant, disagreeable and being emotionally disconnected or unemotional and they all kind of go hand in hand together. And all of those traits, these negative stereotypes, they are all traits that can be relearned. And most of them have been acquired through your upbringing, especially being an avoidant person and being disconnected from your emotions is typically something that has happened to you in the past. It's kind of like a quote unquote trauma response. And if you identify yourself as a t-type just based on those traits it is a negative identification and it keeps you stuck in yeah a negative kind of viewpoint a negative kind of lifestyle and mindset so it's actually best to overcome those traits and realize that they are not actually what t is about with being disagreeable that also is i would say associated with being avoidant but to some extent, being disagreeable can also have other factors. But it is to some extent related to type. It is to some extent related to being a T-type. But you can be an F-type and disagreeable, especially if you relate to being an avoidant attachment style, having avoidant tendency, like avoiding being emotionally vulnerable, being scared of emotional attachments with people. Some other stereotypes that I have not mentioned in that video, which I might have to make another video about, is the stereotypes of being good at math and being interested in technical or scientific topics, pastimes, or even degrees. I go a bit more into that issue later, but, before, but basically I can already say you can be fairly good at math or even pretty good at math and you can be interested in those things and be an F-type. Mathematical ability is more of a skill. And you could argue to some extent that it can be somewhat inborn how naturally good you are at it. And I think that's also why many people think that unless you are a T-type, you are good at math. And if you're not good at math, you're not a T-type and vice versa. But even though it's correlated, it does not mean that it's causation. However, if you go up like the highest levels, people who are like the best at math, usually also math professors and things like that, but like the upper upper levels, like the best mathematicians in the world, overwhelmingly will have the T orientation being a T type and having mathematical skill, simply because those go very well together. They go very much hand in hand and then obviously they are going to be at the top. So, but still you can be an F-type and have math skills and you can be an F-type who is interested in science and technical subjects. And I explain a bit more later why and how that is. I have to bust another myth, which is very pervasive. It is that thinking means you think a lot. <laughs> Basically, if you think a lot, you are a thinking type. If you have a lot of thoughts, then you are a thinking type and if you are very emotional, have a lot of emotions or like uh, problematic emotions, emotional dysregulation, then you must be an F-type because we just associate thinking with actual thinking and feeling with actual emotion. 
and that's not how it works at all actually. Once again, there are correlations, there are indeed correlations between being a feeling type and being more emotional, but it's not necessarily the case. Based on Carl Jung and his dichotomies, feeling and thinking are actually judging functions. Judging meaning that's how you organize information. You judge the information. I also don't like to use the word judge too much because once again there's a lot of other associations that people have thinking that judging means someone is judgmental. Once again if someone is unhealthy there is going to be a correlation between that person being a judging type and being judgmental or having a judging function first and being judgmental but it's not necessarily the case. Thinking types, the judging is through logic. So any kind of information that comes at them, it can be anything. It can be like data, it can be tangible information, it can be through their senses, it can be abstractly. Information just means anything in the world that you take in, in some sense, cognitively. So the thinking type, they organize that information according to logical parameters. So, for example, what makes logical sense? What is the logical structure here, the logical hierarchy? What is the logical data, the facts, the logical understanding, the theory, the theoretical structure? That's what T-types naturally tend to do when they are presented with information and they have to judge it, aka categorize it. And with the feeling types, I prefer what they call ethical and socionics, which is also a system based on the 16 types. So basically, it's less about feeling parameters, but ethical parameters. So usually, F-types structure information based on what is morally good or bad, what is eth the eth right ethical conduct, the right ethical behavior, what is the human behavior in the situation, how should it be adapted, or what is the right mood or what is just the mood in this situation how is my personal moral compass my personal morals or immorals by the way f types can be immoral and they can kind of go against their own moral code in a sense but they are still driven and still focus on judging the world through those through that lens they cannot really escape that so that's roughly what judging is truly about and then of course i have to also point out that we all do both we all use thinking jungian thinking we all use jungian feeling we all judge or categorize information with either orientation i am calling it orientation now because i think that makes it more clear what it really is so <laughs> Kind of like having a sexual orientation, right? It's similar with this one, where you, if you are a thinking type, in a Jungian sense, then you have a thinking orientation. So inherently, your, your cognitive mind is structured in such a way that you will naturally prefer using thinking. And by prefer, I don't mean necessarily that you value it higher. But basically that's just more natural for you to use it and also to use it well. And also to use it without having had to work on it so hard. It's, it's not like you consciously have to make yourself think differently. Which would be more the case if you're an ethical or feeling type that is going through the educational system and is learning how to think logically critically how to look at information from a logical factual evidence-based perspective you can do that if you are an intelligent f-type however it is something that you are learning on top of your natural orientation it's like if you were a gay person and you attempted to act straight and you fit in and you are able to act straight whatever that means but basically 
your mannerisms and just overall your choices in life on the surface are straight but deep down you are actually gay it's the same thing <laughs> i know me i hope i don't offend anyone here but if you are an f type no matter how much you learn your logical skills, no matter how much you apply them in your education or at your job, at the end of the day, the F Fness is going to be underneath and you cannot escape it. So I have a few examples, kind of a story. Uh, so one story is uh, like a friend of mine who had really good grades in school, was very studious. And if you are very studious and pretty intelligent, you are able to be good at several subjects or even subjects that on the surface seem to be against your type. For example, it could be the sciences. Uh, yeah. So my friend, she because she had such good grades, she was like the top of, I think, the entire year. Uh, and... Yeah, at the end of the day, she then decided to study physics. So actually, she knew she was an F-type. I kind of, I told her, but she didn't really go too deeply into the theory, obviously. She was just like, okay, I know I'm an F-type, but I'm not sure. Yeah, okay. But she still went into physics because she didn't connect those dots where she tried to create a lifestyle that suits her personality. She just went along with the expectations of her parents and of her teachers and I suppose society in some sense and her inner desire for completion, internal completion, internal wholeness, right? So basically this is a problem if you are only focused on either one of those two aspects or both of them and you make certain career or lifestyle choices, it can and often is it gonna be against your natural self. So expectations, right? Society probably a lot of parents, a lot of societal structures suggest that it's best to study something technical because it's gonna make more money. And in terms of the inner desire for wholeness, every F type on some level desires to have T as a complement. Every person, also every T-type has a desire for F as a complement. We just need both aspects in our lives to feel whole. But the problem is we cannot do it by ourselves. We are, we are interconnected. We are all, you could say, kind of like kind of in like a, a big, big web, web of, of connection, connection, even though you might not realize it, but we need each other on some level. We are all kind of interdependent. And that in turn means that you cannot do it on your on your own necessarily. You can be, so to speak, whole as who you are, let's say. Like if you are an F-type, you can be whole as an F-type. Or if you're a T-type, you can be whole as a T-type. But you cannot be both at the same time and not to the same degrees. This is where you're trying to be the entire world for yourself. But you are just, you are like maybe like a microcosm in a macrocosm. You you have to still be related with other people. We are just social species. We cannot be everything for ourselves. So in that sense, yeah. So I don't think she did that consciously, by the way. But this is my impression that that's why also why she studied physics. And she probably also met like T-types at physics, obviously, which, which is more natural, right? Anyhow, so yeah. Long story short, she quit physics, it didn't work for her at all, and she had to keep switching up her her major because, yeah, she was really confused and she had like a mini crisis, mini depression, because she basically went entirely against the expectations of her parents, of society, you know, everyone expected her to do that degree or to do something scientific because she had good grades in it and she was just overall like really good at school. Yeah, that, so that was like a negative example. Now she's studying sociology and she's much happier. And sociology, as you can probably guess, is much more F friendly. It's much more connected to ethical human behavior, right? Uh, okay, another example, and this is not so much as a concrete example, but I have just noticed the overall trend of so many F-types 
getting into like a data in the data field like IT maybe even just the tech field and just doing something in the technical field and making a lot of money with it but then later down the line they realize it doesn't fulfill them because it's going against their personality that's the thing if you're doing something that is aligned with your personality it is going to fulfill you and you won't have the desire to find something else so especially with women a lot of women they are in the tech field and then suddenly they go into like makeup and uh, or like lifestyle blogging which are like very sf kind of pastimes uh, and with men they might do similar things they also might go into those fields it really depends on what the rest of your personality type is. You are not just an F type, you're not just a T type, obviously. But yeah, people often then go into like a totally different field that actually suits their personality. And that's often when you can tell, okay, this person, they tried to be like a T type, but at the end of the day, they were actually an F type. So having said all that, there are people out there who are F types and who end up getting into some kind of, you could say, technical field, usually something related to medicine. I see that also frequently, especially also like plastic surgery. People in those fields tend to be more likely an F-type, actually, and uh, not necessarily a T-type. Uh, of course, in medicine, there's both. But yeah, so there are also F-types in medicine. I, I, would, I would assume, especially nurses, but yeah, so there's like medical fields that also can be going into logical territory where there are F-types who can still thrive fairly well, let's say, and who still feel mostly fulfilled by what they're doing. The key is that they have found a way to be in that field and still make use of their ethical function. Or on the other hand, let's say, they do that outside of work, like in their lifestyle. For example, they, they do acting on the side and things like that. So yeah, I think also in the medical field, especially if you deal with people on a regular basis, it can make you employ your ethical feeling function with others more. So that also where it goes hand in hand. So that's also like an example, but one that kind of goes against what I said. But at the end of the day, this is also another solution. So you can just either be like, very much this stereotype and go very much with the stereotype of F or T or you can be able to find your own niche in a certain field where you can still be yourself in a way even though on the surface it doesn't seem to fit and another example I would say is in acting a lot of there are a lot of male actors who are actually T types even though on the surface acting as an F-type makes more sense, right? So I know this is actually a controversial typing, but I do think that Keanu Reeves is actually an ISTP. And you can see it also in the way how he acts, literally like... Yeah, <laughs> you can see he's not really an F-type. He's trying to be... The fact is, his best roles are the roles where he is typecast, basically based on his natural personality. So another example where you, in the field that, of, that on the surface doesn't suit you, your personality, but you can still make it work as long as you find a way to use your real personality. So really as a recap, what being a thinker or feeler is, it's about categorizing information cognitively. It's a cognitive orientation. And yes, certain skills go in, along better with those orientations, like the logical orientation, seeing things in terms of what makes logical sense, data, theories, things like that, versus what is morally, ethically good, bad, favorable, what are the moods, the human behaviors, how to assess those, and things like that. Those are the two orientations. And yes, you can do both. But you should be aware that if you're developing one over the, like if you're trying to develop one over the other, that you might shoot yourself in the foot if you overdo it. And if you create a lifestyle that is entirely based on something that you are pretty much trying to be, but you are not. And yeah, 
like I said, it's fine to develop it, but you have to be aware that you're doing that and that you still have some kind of outlet in your personal life as a hobby, as a side gig, as a side business, or just as your actual career where you can be yourself and you can use your natural judging function and find fulfillment that way. And that way you won't feel the need or desire to step out of whatever you're doing. You won't, yeah, you won't have that need because you will be fulfilled because you're doing something that is in alignment with yourself, in alignment with your true personality. And that's ultimately the goal. Ultimately, that's the purpose of your type. I think that's also the one of the purposes, let's say, of knowing about personality type theory. To be able to make a choice that is more aligned with who you actually are. And I know it can be hard to figure that out. Let's say warning signs that you are mistyping your TOF or that you are trying too hard to develop a weaker function that is not natural to you and you're trying to fit in into some kind of mold is first of all if you're obsessed and very much focused on fulfilling and meeting certain expectations it can be expectations from your parents it can be expectations from your society it can be expectations from perhaps your friends or some teachers if you are too focused on fulfilling certain expectations, there's a very high chance that you are not aligned with yourself. You are not listening to who you really are. The other aspect is, besides expectations, is if you have this inner desire to be whole or like a superhuman übermensch, right? Like you want to be self like totally self-actualized you want to be everything for yourself and deep down you might even feel like you don't really love yourself you don't really accept who you really are because that's actually oftentimes also at the core when you don't really love or accept who you are you will often try to be everything or you will try to be something different something else so if you internally feel like i don't really accept that i mostly make ethical judgments if you don't really accept that, or if you don't cannot really accept who you are, there's also a very high chance that any choice you make from that place is not going to be in alignment with yourself, and that you are likely mistyping yourself, besides all the other stereotypes. If you are still confused, then just you can just reach out to me, go to typeevolution.com, go under get advice scroll down fill out the form and we can see how i can help you i can coach you and or type you and then we can go further with this subject and you will have more of a personal insight into your situation it's not as general as in this video all right okay i hope you have a good day and see you in the next video bye